It's yet another lovely day, and I'm so delighted to be with you. This is Integrated Science for SHS3. My name is Hanno Fabia. Our topic for today is on thermal expansion. Before we begin our lesson, let's take a look at the objectives. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to explain thermal expansion in solids, liquids, and gases demonstrate some effects of thermal expansion, state advantages and disadvantages of thermal expansion, state the uses of expansion in some equipment. I hope you will enjoy this lesson. We are all familiar with the fact that nearly all substances increase in size when heated. We say that the substance has expanded. When a doctor puts a thermometer in your mouth, you may observe expansion of the mercury. Also, if you are observant, you may have noticed that on a hot day, telephone wires and electrical power lines sag more than cool days. Railway tracks buckle due to expansion. Expansion takes place in solids, liquids, and gases. In this lesson, I want us to begin with the expansion of solids. Some examples of expansion of solids are as follows. If a metal ball that can just pass through an iron ring is heated, the ball becomes too big to get through the ring, showing that the metal has expanded. The diagram on your screen shows a metal ring and ball before heating. Now, before heating the ball, the ball can completely pass through the ring. When the ball is heated for some time and then placed in the ring, it could no longer pass through the ring as shown on your screen. Let's now take a look at the expansion of liquids. In the setup shown on your screen, the flask is partially filled with some colored liquid. When the setup is heated for a few seconds, the liquid level rises, showing that the liquid has expanded. Initially, when the flask is heated, the level of the water was lowered, but after some time, the level of the water rises above the original position. We continue with the expansion of gases. A flask with capillary tube fitted to its mouth is inverted into a beaker of water as shown on your screen. When the flask is gently warmed by rubbing the flask with the hand, the bubbles of air are seen in the beaker. This is because our hand is naturally warm and when it is rubbed on the glass, the friction that occurs between our hand and the glass produces heat and this causes the bubble of air seen in the beaker. The warmth of the hand is sufficient to cause the air to expand and bubble up through the water. We will now continue our lesson with the mechanism of thermal expansion. Thermal expansion results from a change in the average distance separating the atoms of a substance. The atoms are held together by bonding forces. The atoms vibrate back and forth with increased temperature, that is more internal energy. They become increasingly active and vibrate over greater distances, that is the average distance between the atom and molecules increases. With wider vibrations in all dimensions, the solid expands as a whole. As the body cools, the molecular motion slows down. The average distance between the molecules becomes less on cooling, and the body reduces in size or contracts. When the substance is in the form of a rod, we speak of its linear expansion, that is expansion in length. When the substance is in the form of a thin plate, we speak of its area or superficial expansion. If the substance is a solid, for example, a cube, we speak of its volume or cubical expansion. For the purpose of this lesson, we will only focus on linear expansion. Linear expansion is the change in one dimension of a solid that is the length, width, and thickness. The change in cross-section is so small that it is neglected. Different bodies expand by different amounts when the same quantity of heat is applied to them. Now let us see some examples of expansion of solids. When hot water is poured in a thick glass tumbler, the tumbler may crack due to uneven expansion across the glass sides. In order to prevent the tumbler from cracking, a metal spoon is placed inside it before the hot water is poured into it, as shown on your screen. And I hope you are observing this diagram carefully. 
bridges built of metals expand when heated by sun or by mechanical energy. And I hope you remember mechanical energy from your previous lesson. That's the lesson on heat. Large forces produced from the expansion can cause damage to the bridge itself. In order to prevent this damage, most large bridges include joints which look like two metal combs facing one another. They are teeth locking. They are called expansion gaps. For similar reasons, rollers are also provided at one end of the bridges to allow for the expansion as shown on your screen. The size of the balance wheel of a watch, which governs the movement of its hands and the length of a pendulum of a clock are affected by the change of temperature which occur from the hot to the wet season. Metal roofing sheets expand during hot days. As a result, the roofing sheets have their ends placed on top of the other to allow for the expansion. So that is why roofing sheets are arranged with one end placed on the top of the other end. Building blocks expand when heated. Concrete sidewalks and pavements therefore have expansion gaps between the building blocks. So when you walk on a pavement, you observe or you see the gaps between the pavement blocks. It is not just there for beautification, but for a purpose. Let us now turn our attention to the uses of expansion. Expansion, which occurs in bodies when heated, is applied to 1. Remove tight metal lids of bowls and bottles. 2. Fit metal wheels on axles of trains. 3. Construct bimetallic thermometers. 4. Construct thermostats in household electrical appliances. And 5. Revert steel plates together in shipbuilding and in the construction of boilers. Now let's see what a bimetallic strip is. What is it? It is used to demonstrate that solids expand by different amounts for the same change in temperature. It consists of two equal lengths of brass and iron reverted together as shown on the screen. When heated in a flame, the strip begins to curve with the brass of the outside showing that the expansion of the brass is greater than that of the iron for the same change of temperature as shown on your screen. And I hope you are observing this carefully. Good, let's continue. My dear students, we are still discussing thermal expansion. At this point, I want us to turn our attention to a thermostat. It is a device that automatically regulates the temperature of a system by maintaining its constant or varying it over a specific range. It operates using a bimetallic strip to switch off the heat supply when the required temperature is reached and to switch it on again when the system falls below this temperature. That is, electric iron, fridges, gas cookers, and etc. all use thermostats. When a deep freezer is operating, the buzzing sound is cut off when the thermostat switches off the current. Finally, I want us to take a look at the fire alarm. The bimetallic strip bends over when made sufficiently hot by a fire to make contact with a screw. This completes an electric circuit which rings a bell and an alarm. This brings us to the end of this lesson. I want us to take a look at a summary of all that we learned in this lesson. In this lesson, we explained what is thermal expansion in relation to solids, liquids, and gases. We also discussed thermal expansion in solids, liquids, and gases. We discussed the advantages and disadvantages of thermal expansion. We also learned about what is done in the construction industry to overcome the disadvantages of thermal expansion. Also, we learned about how thermal expansion is used in the design and construction of some devices, such as the thermostats. And that's about it for today's lesson. I hope it's been interesting and educating, and you've learned a lot of new things. Until we meet again in our next lesson, continue doing the usual thing, that is, read your notes and solve more questions on this lesson to help you understand the lesson better. Thanks for your attention and enjoy the rest of the day.